turn an object into something that looks like glass. If you need a refresher on how to digitally paint and how to just set up a basic opaque object, make sure and go watch the previous video. But this is going to be all about glass. So I'm just setting up a regular letter file with uh, 300 resolution. And now I'm going to go ahead and set up some selections. I use these selections because that's what I do when I'm doing much more complex illustrations. It helps me get cleaner lines and be more efficient with my digital painting. Do I think it's necessary with this very simple sphere and shadow? No, not really, but it's good practice and that's what you should be doing. So I'm using a digital tablet as should you. Do not use a brick, a digital brick also known as a mouse when you're trying to paint. And I'm going to make sure that I have the elliptical tool, elliptical marquee tool selected. And I'm going to make a perfect sphere using my shift with my left hand. You're doing a lot of right hand, left hand, doing two different things with digital painting. You've got to get used to that. So that looks pretty good to me. I could change it if I wanted to. I'm going to go in to my selection tab. I know you can't necessarily see that, but it's my selection tab up here. Go down to save selection. And I'm going to call this, whoop, and I spelled it wrong. That's okay. Call it sphere. I'm going to go back just because I'm, again, working on my kind of hand-eye coordination. And I'm going to make a wall. I don't care if it overlaps or I'm going to put my floor. Again, I'm going to go to selection tab, save selection. And I'm going to call this one wall. Spell it correctly. And then I'm going to deselect Command D and do another one that overlaps that's just called Floor Selection, Save Selection. Ground, actually, is what we're going to call it. Again, this is just good practice for doing this in the future. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is we're going to start blocking in color. So I'm going to load back that sphere. Go to Channels tab, Sphere, click on the Load Selection button, click back into RGB. And I'm going to go click into Layers. I'm going to make a new layer, and I'm going to call this one Base Color. Perfect. So then I'm going to come in, and I'm we're going to paint this a blue color. We're going to kind of make like a sapphire looking gem. That'll be really nice. So I'm going to go look over under my gradient, get my paint bucket, and then I'm going to come over here and look for a color that I want. I want like mid-level. I don't want super dark. I don't want super light. I want like blue, you know, rainbow blue. So that looks good. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually make a new layer. I'm going to call it ground or background. And I will just come in, do my, I'm going to start with ground. I'll load that selection back up to RGB and back over to layer. And now I want to pick a color that's just a little bit more like a light orange. It's pretty ugly, but I like leaving my picker in the spot it was. That helps get colors. It helps me to find colors and choose other colors that are in a similar range instead of picking all over the place. And then you can get one color that's extremely saturated and vibrant, and then another color that's really dulled down. So I like to leave my picker there and make small adjustments off of that. So again, I'm looking kind of for an orange. I don't want too orangey, but I also don't want something boring. So I'm going to go with that. And that looks good. And now I'm going to go a little bit lighter because it's the wall. And I'm going to come over to the wall, load that selection, click back up to RGB layers, and fill my wall. And that looks pretty good, although my sphere it's looking very close to the wall. That's okay. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is start adding highlights. So if we want this to look transparent, how do we 
you know, make that happen. First, we're going to make a highlight layer. We're going to leave this layer for now at normal. Sometimes I come in and play with some of my different layer types, but for now it's going to stay normal. And we're going to load a brush. Remember that is B as well if you want your shortcut command with your left hand. And I want a super soft brush for now. And I just want to turn down everything. I like to start low and work my way up. And you can already see what that's going to start to do. So I just command undid. Now I don't want this to affect any other space. So I can load back my sphere so that I'm only painting inside the sphere. I'm not painting on the wall or anything, which I really like. So if I'm going to say that the light is coming again from the upper left and shining down, I'm this light is going to pierce this clear object and it's going to go all the way through and actually be more focused on the back wall of this sphere. So that's kind of the trick. Instead of putting your highlights at this front part, we're going to add some glossy highlights towards the end, but your highlights actually are more oops, undo that, more focused on this region. So I'm just going to paint in some. I hate when I get it too sharp, so I'm kind of making it. And I'm not going right to the edge, right? I, this is still a sphere. So you want it to have some of that. So like that would represent light coming from here. If I wanted the light to come more from there, I should definitely be getting some more of my focus on this opposite wall. Okay, so then the next thing we're going to do, and you can kind of build some of that up. Like I could get in here and, and again, I'm using some of that yellow because one, my light source is yellow and two, my, my room is yellow. So it's definitely going to be a lot of the color that the light is reflecting and reflecting into this object. But for actual like light light, I can get it even lighter if I want. I want to be very careful because as it's going through this object, it's not really showing the light that's casting onto the object. It's showing the light plus all of this inside of the sphere and then that coloring. So you have to be really careful. And I'm just kind of using, and I don't care if a few of those little like sharper moments of highlight show up, that's okay. I can always go in and either mask or race, but I definitely kind of want a few of those in there. So I'm just kind of, and if you notice, I'm doing a little bit of like a dot and a line, dot, line. Okay. So I'm going to kind of move on just so you can see like the next pieces of this. So now I'm going to add a little shading. I don't need a lot. It's mostly lighting off of this base color. Um, and again, we can kind of mess with this a little bit. It's a lot of push and pull. But I'm going to make a new layer. I'm going to call it shade. And I'm going to turn to multiply because that's just how I always do my shade layers for the most part. I'm going to load my sphere if it's not already loaded. Mine's still loaded. And I'm going to, I'm going to get a little bit darker of a color. I'm going to paint just a little bit of shading to make it look round. Just a little bit more than what I already have. So... While I have my brush, I can click on Option on a Mac to get back to that like base blue. And then I can come down just a little bit from it. I'm not trying to get crazy with this, but I do want a little bit more dimension. And now I can come in and just lightly paint in. This is transparent, mind you. So I don't want too much, but I just want a little bit of dimension in there. Okay, 
Now this is where it's really gonna start to turn to glass because of your cast shadow. Remember, it's all these visuals that come together that make something read realistic. It's not one thing over the other. Um, but because it's transparent, this shadow that we're used to doing that, you know, would hit here and, and come up along the wall some, it's not going to be a flat shadow. It's going to have a lot more dimension to it. And it's going to be more transparent in the middle. So what you can do is go off of the base. I guess we're going to call this cast shadow. You do kind of want to um, specify these. Because you can get a lot of shadows in a complex illustration. Okay, so cast shadow. I'm going to work kind of off of a black version of this orangey base and actually I want to have a little bit more blue in that so I'm going to work off of a base version of this blue because it's the light that's coming through that's what's causing this shadow and I'm going to initially paint the shadow that I know should be there so this is just the should if it was an oops I'm going to command D so I can unselect that this is the shadow that would be there if it was an opaque object, right? I'm coming off. Now I want to go down a little bit more, so I'm coming off of my object to the wall and then rounding up the wall. It's almost like I have to look at it. If this ground was here, it would be casting a shadow way back over in here. And then, and it's okay that it's on top. I'm going to move this down below in a minute. I'm kind of looking at it so you guys can see where I'm really painting. And then you almost have to address then the wall, which if this was coming down, it would cast a shadow about and here. And see how these are two different pieces for now. Now I'm kind of joining them. Painting, painting, not worrying that I'm on top of that sphere right now. That is not a big deal. Painting. But I'm addressing both surfaces differently. I can get in here, I can paint it a little bit darker in this section. Because the second I turn it into multiply, and I even turn this down just a bit, I mean, just look, just that. You can already see, it helps you see these planes, it helps you see the sphere, my sphere's sitting a little too close to the wall. And now I'm gonna bring this down below, bring this layer obviously below and now you really start getting into some of the fun. Okay, so I'm even going to now, I, I like to work in masks when I'm erasing things. I don't really like to erase because I find it hard to get it, harder to paint it back in than I do to remove some of the masking. So I'm gonna mask out some of the center because if this sphere was solid, my shadow would be solid. If this sphere is transparent, science behind it is, it's not going to be solid. So I'm gonna come in here and start erasing out some of the center. Already look how it's starting. Oh, I'm reading that light's coming through it. That light's hitting this back surface. It's then also hitting my wall. And I'm just masking out. I'm also refining my shadow because the furthest way furthest away from the object which is like anything over here it needs to be the most faded because it's scientifically the furthest part away and that's how it works and now depending on if this shadow was hitting that wall which it does look like it would be a little bit I'm kind of sharpening it here and leaving it more faded there. And I'm just doing this all through a mask. And you can see right away how that's already starting to make that look more like an actual glass. Okay, couple more things. You can see how quickly we can actually do this. Now I'm gonna add some reflective light. Obviously the light going through this reflecting onto the surface is going to be shining through a glass object. Just like if there was like a glass window in front of a light that was colored, it's gonna shine that color through it, right? So now we are gonna make on top of this cast shadow layer, we're gonna call it reflective light. 
and we're gonna get some of this blue black blue back option with my brush on and I'm gonna make sure it's really faint I can always paint it up I just want this really faint moment and I'm gonna leave it at normal for now that's fine and let's just see what getting some bright and you might have to turn up your brightness so for example I can get in here and just turn it up this way and it's gonna take a little bit because remember I'm at like 10 and 12 percent but now you can start to see this blue and by putting it on top of this wall layer it's gonna automatically start showing some of that yellow through you don't have to guess so much it's starting to reflect this color I want to get in there with command plus and really get this moment looking really blue because it just should and look how that's starting to really look transparent we're, we're building up the science of it okay going on now your glossy highlight oh it's like the most fun moment new layer let's call it glossy highlight Now only objects of certain surfaces are going to have this kind of highlight. I do work mostly in a white for this. It's like my only moment of maybe pure, pure white. Or I get almost white with like the palest yellow. See how close that is? And I'm going to paint on now these kind of glossy moments. And I'm going to build them up also. And I like to get my brush a little harder, like a little sharper on the edges because it's a gloss. I can always go in and I'm kind of mapping them out. I'm like, all right, this is kind of where I want. I want this little dot because he's reflecting through, right? I added that dot there. Then I'm going to get pretty serious about <laughs> how bright this is. undo that didn't get in the spot that I wanted it to okay not perfect but look at that sphere if I was coming in and kind of tweaking a few little parts I'm not super sold on some of my highlight I would want to turn some of that down and my reflective light color I might turn up so coming back over with option, grabbing that, and maybe even trying to get really like a blue blue in there. And you can always add another color if you're nervous. Like, oh my God, my reflective light looks so good. I don't want to screw that up, but I want to test something. Just make a new layer. That looked ridiculous. And start painting it in. And then you can always manipulate that. If at some point you need those layers to really like come together, you can always um, merge them through your drop down menu. I'm not going to, but I'm just kind of showing you. You can you can do a lot with some test layers if you want to. Um, I'm just gonna turn mine down pretty low, but I just wanted you to see that. And then last but not least, because you definitely need it, don't forget that contact shadow that's huge in making something look very realistic. It needs to be a multiply. Why does it need to be multiply? Because if we're going to use this dark reflective -y blue into it, I want some of that orange to show through. I don't want it to be like pure black. That would just be weird. And... I do want a more faded because I can always come back and fix that but I like personally starting with a more faded and I like to get this like pretty perfect at first and then go back and kind of tweak what I need to because at that point I could come in and it's pretty close. I definitely need to be showing a little bit more shadow kind of around this guy. He's really dark right now. This is crazy. I'm going to turn him back. But I'm just kind of like showing you how I smooth things sometimes. 
Okay, and this one I might use an eraser for. Fine. You can, you don't have to. Turn it up just a little bit. Get in there and refine it. You don't want to have like a bumpy edge. That would be weird. You want to have these like clean. That did not do exactly what I wanted. So just undo. It's back forth, back forth. And I'm just kind of cleaning up my edge. Painting, cleaning. I'm trying to round it nice and sharp. And if you realize at some point you've gotten not enough maybe blue shining in that, not the end of the world, you can always either paint in a little bit of blue. That's super easy. If you want, because you're going to have some of that reflective light, right? And I've got to multiply so it's not going to necessarily. And then make sure you save it and you're done. Good job.